Hey folks, Jonathan here. Got my tires in for the uh, whippet for the front. We actually moved the other ones to the back. We've got the rims off ready to start changing the tires. Uh, I'm hoping there's a boot that goes inside of the tire that keeps the tube away from the rim. I'm hoping they're good in there. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, wasn't real impressed with the tires. Uh, and I explained the situation with that. These tires came from Summit, but they were supposed to be Coker tires, and Coker does sell these tires, but I bought them as Coker brand tires, okay, and the reason I buy them from Summit instead of Coker is because Coker charges shipping, and Summit don't, but they're the same price. So, you know, common sense is going to tell you, you know, to get them through a place you can get it a little cheaper anyway. And uh, so anyway, I get them. There's a big made in Taiwan tag on them. And uh, Universal Village Tire Company out of Hershey, Hershey Pennsylvania. And uh, nothing about Coker. And definitely made in Taiwan. So, you know, it just kind of bothered me because I thought I was buying something that was at least made here in the United States. Well, I had just messaged... Uh, on the auction uh, summit back to let them know you know that they were selling tires making people believe that they were actually coker brand tires because there's a place on the auction that says brand and it says coker these are not coker brand tires now coker does not claim that these are their, their, their tires and matter of fact if you look it says brand is universal but if you look at the brand on the auction it says coker so anyway, they messaged back and said, well, they're Coker tires. You can call Coker and they'll tell you. And I, of course, I'm not going to do that because I know Coker's going to tell me that they buy them from another company and that's just the way it is. But to actually advertise them as Coker brand tires, you know, that's basically saying that I'm selling you an American tire, but really you're, they're selling me a tire from Taiwan. And uh, nah, that's just the way it goes, I guess. But just kind of bothered me that they would uh, sort of mislead you uh, instead of just being straight up. I'm not saying I wouldn't bought the tires if they wasn't, you know, if they were, if I knew they were made in, in Taiwan or Vietnam. I think it was made in Vietnam actually, but uh, I, you know, I probably would have still bought them, but uh, you know, I would have at least knew what I was getting. So uh, I was trying to find probably another sticker on the other tire that says where they were made. I was thinking it was, let me see if I can find it real quick because I took the other one off and and tossed it, but let me see if I can find the other one. Okay, there's the sticker. Definitely Vietnam and not Taiwan. But uh, anyway, you know, I guess, you know, if you bought a car and they claimed it to be American made product and it ended up being a Vietnamese car, you know, that'd be kind of bad, but I guess you can do that with tires and get by. So anyway, we're going to uh, change these tires. I didn't show much on changing the tires for the L car, but pretty much going to show you how this is done, and I won't show you the whole boring process, but for starters, these are split rims, and they split right here, and you can see our bolt. We're going to get our bolt out. Same with this one. And then I'll show you how we do it from there. Okay, first thing we'll do is make sure the tire is busted down. I think this one is. Alright. Uh, we got a little bit of repair to do on. Not an issue. Yeah, I broke the bolt off. Again, not an issue. It ain't gonna be the first broken bolt I've ever taken out. Now this tool I bought on eBay when I was getting ready to do the tires for my L car. So in really nice shape. Hook it on the lips of it. And there we go. As you can see what it does is takes it loose and then it actually folds it over it so you can uh, 
be able to get the tire apart. A lot of rust. All right, let's get the wheel off our tire off and see what kind of shape it's going to be in. Okay, not in terrible shape. We've got some, uh, we do have some rust issues, some rust holes. So what I'll do is clean it up really well. I'll go through there and weld them all, grind it back down. And uh, the way these pit, you know, a lot of times it'll be thick around the hole. So we won't have any issues. We'll straighten this hole out. We're going to drill that and fix it, uh, re-tap that hole. And uh, that rim will be fine. Let's get this other one taken down and see what it looks like. All right. That rim's in a lot better shape. That's a nice rim. Really nice rim. And here's our boot. Our boot is usable. And here's our two. All state. We got one patch. We got a blowout. Looks like my turbo hose there. Uh, there's two more patches. Yep, three patches on that one too. Okay, folks, I think we're going to go ahead and put a tire on this rim. We're going to hold off on the other one because I need to, I want to go ahead and get a boot and stuff for it. But uh, we'll put one new one on. All right, let's try to get this uh, tire on. Show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to start by putting some baby powder inside of the wheel. It'll keep the tube from sticking to it and allow it to move around. Won't hurt a thing. Right. We're going to take our tube. We're going to put a little bit of air in it to, to get it to so it ain't so flat. Okay, this will keep it from getting stuck in between the liner and the tire or anything like that. It's not up real well, but I mean it's it's just to where it'll keep its shape. Now we're going to put some baby powder on the tube and rub it on there. Stick it in the tire. Guess I might want to get a little bit of that extra baby powder out of it. Did go kind of overboard. baby powder. We're going to do the same thing with it. We've got our liner in. It looks good. It should protect our tube good. And we'll lay our rim down. Oh. 
I'm going to put our rim tool back on it, squeeze it just a little bit. Okay, folks, we got one new tire sitting on there. Uh, it's been a few days ago since I was doing the video on changing the tire, and I know the, my battery went dead on my camera, and I didn't get the last part of putting it on, but you see how it's done. It's not, uh, it's not too complicated. And uh, if you're really scared, you can bolt it on first before you put air in it, but they're not too bad like that. Uh, and that's an actual split rim, what's considered a split rim. But uh, anyway, let me see. I did do a little floor work. Uh, We've got the plywood in it, cut out. I've still got to mount the starter switch and the dimmer switch over there. So uh, that's finished up, and that's about it on this uh, for now. Uh, of course, been working on the hardware and working on. Uh, I picked up that 8.2 diesel, but uh, one of the main things is uh, I've got rotation inspection next month for at least one county and maybe two counties. So I've got to go through all my trucks, make sure that, you know, there's no lights out or anything like that, do a little maintenance on them and uh, make sure that the, uh, I, you know, you got to have six flares and you got to have a broom, a shovel, an axe, a, uh, you know, oil dry, just, just a bunch of stuff that you got to keep on the truck and make sure it's on there. So I'm going to go through all that, but, uh, you know, we'll be back on this before too long. Uh, I've you know got the other rim I need to fix I don't have another flap for it uh, flap liner boot whatever you want to call it uh, I think they call it a actually called a flap but uh, anyway we're gonna come up with you know one for it and we'll get the other tire on and uh, this is the actual rim that still needs one spoke put in it but I'm not too worried about that right now we was actually knowing I was gonna try to get this thing to where I could we could run it down to a, uh, a show that we're having, actually, you know, a, a Cameron show. It's a local show uh, that a Zaxby's is putting on for uh, backpacks for kids, I think is what it's called. It's uh, helping kids buy stuff to get back to school. And they're raising, you know, a little bit of money. That's going to be Saturday. And we was going to, you know, bust butt and get this thing to where it would at least, uh, I could haul it down there and then him, you know, Noah wanted to drive it on there, but I think we're going to take maybe take the diesel truck and let him drive it over to there. Uh, I've got, actually got a, a friend that owns a shop right there across the road from it that actually uh, I tow for, and we can park over there and just drive you know the roll back and park and drive straight across. So I know you know Noah's wanting to wanting to take something, so uh, it's a pretty good deal. It's five bucks to get in and you get to eat for free, and if you go down there and buy a meal, it's more than five bucks. So you know, it's one of them win-win situations, and of course, I'm going to drive the L car down there. So uh, we'll see how everything goes. But we'll be back to work on this before too long. Uh, I don't have a lot to do on, you know, getting these trucks ready and stuff, but I don't want to put it off, uh, put it off till the last minute, and then you know something comes up because when uh, Highway Patrol says they're going to inspect you in September, it could be September 1st. It could be, you know. The last day of September, so you you never know, and uh, so we're going to be ready, not have to worry about it. Uh, I've got a couple tires to change on one of the wreckers and my old international smaller wrecker that I don't use very often at all. But uh, I used to use it a lot, but just don't use it that much no more. But uh, got to have it, so we got to change a couple tires on it, and and uh, I think I've got one ball bad on the the light bar for the strobes and just little stuff like that so uh, so bear with me here and we'll be back on things uh, we're also working on the next rat rod build hot rod build which is what you know we're gonna call it 1976 uh, Buick Skyhawk with a 350 we was gonna do an LT1 but uh, I, I don't want to overcomplicate it uh, we're gonna end up uh, doing it uh, a 350 uh, matter of fact, I'm going to walk down and we'll go ahead and film that car because I know some people seen it come in, but everybody hasn't. 
Okay, for anyone that hasn't seen it, this is a 1976 Skyhawk uh, made by Buick. It's basically the same thing as a Monza. Uh, this was a 231 V6 four-speed car originally, and it had had a 350 or a 305 or something small block put in it uh, years back. Now, they took the engine back out, but I have got bell housing, transmission, um, motor mounts, uh, exhaust manifolds, and oil pan so i've got everything to put on another 350 to put in this and that's what we're going to do i've got a brand new set of tires for it i've got a brand new clutch brush plate throttle bearing uh we've got a about an 83 82 83 model chevrolet van with a bad transmission that we're going to pull the engine out of and i don't know what we'll do on the engine i've got you know a little bit of chrome and stuff we might throw on it but we're going to uh do the all the brakes on this car we're going to do something about the fuel tank. I don't know how bad it is, but I'm guessing it's not too good after sitting. Driver's door don't open. Uh, there's a few rust spots on it. We're not going to worry a lot about it. We'll get it cleaned up and try to get it straightened up. Uh, you can see the door panels laying inside of it off the driver's side. And I've got another tail light to go back here. But uh, that's the plan. And with a four speed, 350. In this light car, 13 inch tires and stuff, it ought to just, you know, feel like it's got all the power in the world. And uh, interior is pretty rough and dirty. All the parts are laying in it. We're not going to do a thing until the day of the build. Uh, no cleaning or nothing. I may have to order an uh, aluminum radiator for it. But we'll have, uh, we'll have people cleaning, uh, getting things inside cleaned up, getting it all ready. We'll have, uh, we may have to patch a hole or two in the floorboard. Uh, we might put some, uh, do a little bit of carpet work. I've got some automotive carpet. Uh, Army. I've got some automotive carpet. Uh, we will put in it. We'll have somebody doing the tires. We'll have somebody doing the brakes. We'll go ahead and redo all the brakes on it. We don't have to take a chance on it. And uh, we'll just make it into a... A quick hot rod fast car. It should be really fast anyway for what it is. And uh, it don't take much to make them feel fast. So that's the that's the one day build. It's going to be coming up. And I haven't set a date yet. Uh, probably going to do things a little different. Instead of putting $100 a piece in the builders and then one of the builders winning the car, I think what we're going to do is anybody that's here can put $25 in, including the builders. Uh, you get one chance at the car unless you're a builder and if you put $25 in and in our builder then you get two chances we'll put two tickets in for them that way they have a little bit of an advantage not much but uh, and we hopefully will raise some money for bikers against child abuse and uh, somebody will have them a well a play toy so all right appreciate everybody watching until next time bye